All right, stocks trying to find some buyers into the close. About seven and a half minutes left. Nate Peterson joins me, Director of Derivatives Analysis at the Schwab Center for Financial Research, as does Colin Martin, Director and Fixed Income Strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. What's up, guys? Nate, get us started here. Uh, stocks getting hit today. VIX moving higher after it already been stuck at 20. So uh, I guess things are getting interesting. Yeah, uh, certainly. And, you know, look, we're, we're getting really close to the election day. And, you know, I, I write a weekly blog and I just said, look, I'd be really surprised. And we've talked about it, Oliver, that, you know, we do not see some kind of a pullback either before the election or just after a sell on the news. And you would think, you know, given how well the stock market's been performing uh, through historically bearish September and October, it's been doing well. Uh, that uh, why not take some exposure off? And then you've got enough of an excuse with uh, mega cap tech performing poorly and then throw in some bond yields that are creeping higher there. And that's enough to just say, OK, uh, let's go ahead and just take some exposure off. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of catalysts, potentially market moving catalysts here over the next five days. FOMC meeting Election Day, we've got non-farm payrolls. I mean, there's a lot on the table. Yeah, absolutely. And throughout all of it, Bonds finding conviction to sell off, uh, Colin. Uh, is it smart to get in front of the bears right now in treasuries? You know, I don't know if we're necessarily getting in front of the bears, but we're seeing some value here. We, we've seen such a big pickup uh, just over the past six weeks or so, and we think that it's presented an opportunity for, for anyone who thought they missed out on on the the attractive deals that we're seeing now. It's it's an it's an opportunity to, to get back in. Now we're not saying that yields won't rise higher. We're not necessarily predicting that they'll fall. But if we step back and look at what the economic look, uh, outlook looks like and, and kind of where we are in terms of Fed expectations, we're seeing, we're, we are seeing some value with yields right now. I mean, a 60, 70 basis point increase in the 10-year Treasury yield is, is nothing to sneeze at. And I think there's a lot of investors who are probably a little bit worried about all this volatility, anxious about this volatility, and, and maybe that they're still waiting in these short-term investments. We think from a diversification standpoint, this has certainly presented an opportunity. All right. We were talking about munis in the last block, uh, clipping a 9.5% plus uh, high-yield coupon. Is it as juicy as it sounds, Colin? No, I'll focus on, on the high-yield uh, corporate side of the equation. Uh -huh. because my colleague Cooper will, will touch on munis. But I know he likes bonds, munis, though. You can't... <laughs> You can't deny the yields uh, that high yield bonds offer. If we look at high yield corporates right now uh, on a taxable basis, we're looking at average yields over 7% or so. And when you look at that, uh, just from a yield standpoint, it, that, that certainly looks attractive. Of course, who wouldn't want a high yield bond? I, mean, I think everyone would. But when you dig in and, and figure out you know, what's the component of that seven plus percent yield? Most of it's really just coming from the level of treasuries, not necessarily risk compensation. So we're looking at credit spreads. That's the extra yield that corporate bonds offer above comparable treasuries. The average spread of the Bloomberg high yield corporate bond index is at 2.8 percent or, or even a little bit lower right now. That's, that's just very, very low historically. So it, it you know, I think it offers a little bit of, of caution there. We, we don't suggest anyone dive in. If you are looking at that 7% plus yield as attractive, it can be it can be appropriate for long-term investors willing to ride out the ups and downs. But we caution that if the economic outlook were to deteriorate, those razor thin spreads don't leave much room uh, for error. And, and you could see some, some pretty large price declines if that were to come to fruition. Okay, understood. Like uh, uh, making it work for the credit side too. Fair response. Uh, Nate, okay, you got a highlight for this afternoon. Any giant whose uh, footsteps matter the most? Well, I mean, they're, they're both important, right? With Apple and Amazon. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, the, the earnings reports were great. I mean, I think there's just really uh, a little bit of a reset on, you know, how long are, the, are these CapEx budgets going to continue to rise? I mean, Meta said that they expect 2025 to significantly increase. Uh, so that type of language, although we're not talking about the metaverse when the, the stock was really punished, you know, three, four years ago, um, it's just something that investors will likely be, be a little bit sensitive to. It hurts margin like on a company like Microsoft down the line. So earnings remain important, but they remain intact. If you look at the latest uh, you know, estimates here, we've got 5% revenue growth. We got 9% EPS growth. 
If you look to the Q4 estimate, it's down to 13.7 from 14.1 about a week ago. We'll keep an eye on that. That's still very healthy. 2025 still intact at 15.2%. But I'd say perhaps one of the risks uh, with this whole setup with stocks and the rates and Fed is if bond yields remain higher for longer and the Fed doesn't move as quickly as possible, does that actually impact negatively those EPS forecasts for 2025? Yeah, well said. Certainly could. And right now we need him to not disappoint. Appreciate the thoughts, guys. Nate Pearson, Colin Martin. Nice little uh, duo there on stocks and bonds.